Hello everyone, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Right now there are billions of people across the world who have no access to basic banking, credit, and digital and international financial services. These people are stuck in localized, cash-based economies with no real access to the outside world. Imagine, if you, will, if you will, a world where everybody, from a financial standpoint, is connected, where people anywhere can send money across the world for no fees and with no restrictions. Well, that world is now possible thanks to cryptocurrencies. Just as the World Wide Web created an internet of information, cryptocurrencies create an internet of money. They allow for digital currencies and transactional systems that are free, open, and usable for everyone. By relying on technology instead of traditional methods, the way that transactions occur in our society can be transformed. And because transactions are such an important part of our current capitalist economy, it's important to ask the question of where might these cryptocurrencies go in the future? What roles may they have in the economy? Are they going to be common currencies? Will they replace the dollars in my back pocket? Or are they just going to flop? Well, first, we have to ask, what are cryptocurrencies? And cryptocurrencies are decentralized digital currencies, which means that uh, units of currency are merely encrypted digital bits that are tied to a certain individual. These uh, units of currency operate on networks that have pre-programmed protocols that dictate how units of currency will be circulated and how transactions will occur. Cryptocurrency began with Bitcoin in 2008, uh, and the reason why people wanted to come up with cryptocurrency was to get away from our traditional and current systems for how transactions are processed. Uh, current methods rely a lot on intermediaries to broker transactions between parties. This includes payment processors, banks, and other financial services companies and institutions. All of these companies work uh, by brokering these transactions between parties, and they work in what are called centralized networks. And so a centralized network, let's say we're talking about a bank. Let's say we're talking about Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo will hold a centralized ledger, ledger where they're keeping track of credits, debits, withdrawals and deposits, and if someone wanted to move money from one account to another, they'd have to go through Wells Fargo. And Wells Fargo, on their ledger, would add and subtract to accounts accordingly. While this functions and allows people to transact with each other, it also has some downsides. Namely, it increases the cost of transactions because people have to pay fees to these intermediaries. It increases the time that it takes for transactions to take place. And it increases the uncertainty within transactions. So the people who were coming up with cryptocurrency wanted to create a way for people to transact directly peer to peer without the need for an intermediary. And they achieved this through a technology called a blockchain. Blockchain is just a master ledger of every single transaction that has ever occurred within a network. Uh, except instead of being held by a central authority, as with traditional methods, it is decentralized, which means the exact same copy of this ledger is held among thousands of computers within a network. Each computer has the exact same copy of this ledger, and they are constantly updating it and verifying it to reflect transactions that occur. This is important for a number of reasons. Namely, it allows for something known as distributed consensus. Because all of these ledgers are being updated and they all are the same, there is complete consensus among the community about who owns what at any given time. And that, in essence, is the currency. Uh, because of this consensus, because we know who owns what at any time, transactions can be directly peer-to-peer. -peer. If someone wanted to transact directly with each other, they would simply uh, on their app or on, on whatever device they're using, send the transaction, then that transaction would be picked up by this network of computers, it'd be processed, it'd be verified, and it'd be stored on this ledger of transactions, putting the transaction in cryptographic sto stone, so to speak. Um, this uh, system of storing transactions is secure because every single transaction in the ledger is linked to every single previous transaction, hence the name blockchain which means that if someone wanted to hack the blockchain and say change the amount of bitcoins in their cryptocurrency account, they would have to not only alter one transaction, but every single transaction in history, and they would have to do so with a control over a majority of computers <laughs> on this network. 
something that's virtually impossible, making blockchain an extremely secure way to store uh, records and information. And that technology is uh, really revolutionary. Cryptocurrency is just the first application of this blockchain technology. Anything that relies on record keeping could uh, feasibly be changed. Things like land registry, stock ownership, voting, all of these could be changed with cryptocurrency. And currently, companies are making huge investments in blockchain technology in order to try to make their systems more efficient. Uh, so all told, the blockchain is this autonomous network of computers that's constantly updating this ledger and verifying it and encrypting it. And it allows for this consensus of ownership of who owns what of this currency. It allows people to transact directly with each other. Because people can transact directly with each other without having to go through an intermediary, transactions uh, become virtually free because there's no one they're having to pay fees to in order to complete that transaction. Transactions are much faster because uh, you don't have to go through an intermediary and transactions are much more secure because they're stored on this blockchain network. So as a transactional system, cryptocurrency in one way or another is going to change the way that we exchange. Uh, it could just be that we, we continue to use regular currencies like the US dollar as our store of value, but then convert to cryptocurrency, do a monetary transaction such as uh, an international money transfer, transactions that are very costly and take a lot of time. Those could definitely be changed and then people, or they could transact with them and then they could convert back to regular currency. Or, as a lot of banks are doing currently, they're developing their own blockchain technology to integrate into their transactions to make them much more efficient. So, when we talk about cryptocurrency as, uh, as does it have the potential to be a common currency? Well, first we have to ask, what is currency? And all currency is, is a means of exchange, a means of barter. People, instead of having to use goods and services themselves to trade, they can use a third store of value, currency, in order to trade. And of course, this currency can be digital, as we see more and more today, more and more payments are happening electronically and digitally. Uh, and also, currency does not necessarily need intrinsic value. You, the, US, excuse me, the US dollar used to be based on the gold standard, but no longer today. It's only, it only has value because the government declares it to have value. All a currency needs to operate is it needs the trust of the community using it. If people agree that a currency has value and they agree on what that value is, then they're able to freely use it to transact. But if not, then it's worthless. So cryptocurrency currently is definitely being used as a currency. People are, are making uh, billions of dollars worth of purchases of goods and services through cryptocurrency. Uh, however, it does have a lot of room to gain some, some more of that trust to, have, to be on par with currencies like the US dollar or any other national currency. And the biggest obstacle to that right now is the stability of its price. This is a chart showing the value of Bitcoin and US dollars over the past six months. And it's fluctuated all the way from $3,000 to $18,000 and back down to six. And this is a benefit for some people who are you know, speculating on the price of, current, of cryptocurrency and are doing trades and trying to make a profit off of it. But it's really dangerous for cryptocurrency, uh, and it really endangers its viability as a currency. Uh, a currency definitely needs to be stable. I need to be sure that the money in my back pocket is going to be uh, pretty much the same value as it was the day before. And that doesn't currently exist, exist with cryptocurrency. A huge reason behind this is simply how new, crypto how new cryptocurrencies are. You know, People are kind of unsure and are just speculating on the underlying value of the technology. And also, people are unsure about what sorts of rules and regulations may come to affect cryptocurrency. However, as time goes on and as those kind of things become more clear, uh, as more and more businesses and individuals start to use cryptocurrency, then there's no reason to believe why that uh, price would not stabilize and become much closer to that of traditional currencies. Uh, an important aspect of cryptocurrency is a process called mining. All these computers on the network that are verifying these transactions and adding them to the ledger, they are solving these complex crypt cryptographic puzzles and algorithms that ensure the authenticity of every single transaction. Uh, 
And in exchange for all this computational work that these computers are doing, they get new units of cryptocurrency as rewards for all the computational work that they're putting forth. And this is important for a number of reasons. First off, it is how new units of currency are circulated into the economy. Secondly, it keeps things cheap because these miners, these all these computers on the network that are keeping it secure, are getting paid, essentially, with the currency itself rather than fees from users. And finally, it keeps things secure. It creates this incentive for more and more computers to join the network and make it more secure. The only downside, especially with older currents, cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, is that they use a lot of power because all these computers are doing this massive computational work. It's turned into, it's turned into a business where there's these huge server farms where people are just mining and mining Bitcoin and there's cloud mining services that people can sign up for. But at this point, Bitcoin mining is using as much electricity as the entire nation of Ireland. That's enough energy to power three million American households. And while there are technologies being developed that, are, that achieve that consensus and achieve that security in this blockchain network much more efficiently, the, the power usage in the mining still exists as a, a current barrier for cryptocurrency from both an environmental and a financial standpoint. Another important aspect of cryptocurrency is that it's encrypted. When all these transactions are placed onto this ledger, when they all occur in this network, they uh, go through a process of encryption. And this basically allows for digital, online, financial anonymity. Uh, there's ways to uh, link, link amounts of currency to accounts, but not necessarily those accounts to individuals. So a lot of people are using cryptocurrency in order to evade taxes, in order to launder money, in order to use these online marketplaces that deal exclusively in cryptocurrency to buy things like drugs, weapons, malware, child pornography. And in addition to that, governments today are now even uh, investing in developing cryptocurrency technology. Countries like North Korea, Russia, and Venezuela are all investing in trying to start their own cryptocurrencies in an effort to circumvent sanctions. All of these factors lead to potential regulation that cryptocurrency may face. Some, some countries have already banned cryptocurrency usage outright, while uh, others, the US for example, we just treat it like property. You have to report your gains and losses to the IRS and they're subject to capital gains. However, in the future, the, the regulation that may end up facing cryptocurrency is going to uh, pave the path for its future. Uh, Cryptocurrency itself may be hard to regulate because there it's this anonymous, encrypted, peer-to-peer -peer network. It's hard to regulate that. But regulations that do end up facing cryptocurrency could either make it extremely expensive through additional compliance costs, possibly to the point where cryptocurrency is no longer even worth using, uh, or they could just ban it outright. And in my opinion, that would just kind of restrict a... Uh, a, a valuable technology from, from the public. Uh, but it's also true that as developments in cryptocurrencies happen, uh, they may be able to get around regulations or, or be more compliant. Uh, so Bitcoin was the first and is still the most popular cryptocurrency, but that is changing. This is a chart showing the percent of market share that is held by different cryptocurrencies. And Bitcoin is there in the orange. Uh, and while it's been 90% or, or around there for most of its life, uh, recently that's changing, especially as much more cryptocurrencies are being developed. Today, there are over 1,500 different cryptocurrencies. And while some of these are more of jokes, like there's Trump coin, Jesus coin, Onion coin, all these ridiculous ones, but there's also a lot of serious cryptocurrencies being developed that utilize the blockchain in extremely effective ways. Uh, New, tech, new technologies are being developed and new cryptocurrencies are being developed that have unique and versatile applications. So it's possible that the role that cryptocurrencies may end up having in the economy doesn't even exist yet. Uh, in addition to developing new technologies, these cryptocurrencies are also being developed and are overcoming a lot of the challenges faced by uh, older or current cryptocurrencies. So for example, I mentioned the mining problem. Uh, Bitcoin uses a lot of electricity, but something like Ripple has uh, developed a new way to get that consensus on the network and to verify transactions that just is secure, but is much more power efficient. 
Uh, other, other cryptocurrencies like Litecoin, Litecoin is a, a much faster and scalable version of Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum allows for what are called smart contracts where people can feasibly program into the blockchain these self-executing contracts that could have the exact same weight as legal contracts. Uh, these, uh, these developments are, are changing how cryptocurrency works and are charting its future. And uh, in the future cryptocurrency, I will say this, I will say blockchain, no matter what, is going to have some, some integration, some function in our society. Blockchain is going to be used for record keeping applications. It's going to be used for transactions no matter what. Uh, cryptocurrency, specifically, cryptocurrency could be banned or heavily regulated, as I said, or it could continue in its current role. People could continue to speculate on the price and simply trade in that regard, but then use it for select transactions like those international money transfers. However, if development continues in the cryptocurrency sector, at, if the price continues to stay or does stabilize and excessive government regulation is not placed on cryptocurrency, then there's no reason why cryptocurrency couldn't be a major currency used in society in the future. Thank you.